Hello, today I'm going to show you a Fremencio workup of Alvin valve tower with a calcifier homograph. This is one of the more challenging cases to work up because the, it was a root replacement. And so there are a number of nuances to go over. So first I'm going to double click here to look at the septal length because this is an anatomy that would be in continuity with the LVOT, you can see that here. And so this is an estimate of what that might entail. You can see that that's the septal length and we're gonna save that image before go ahead with the automated segmentation. The reason is that, you know, depending on which valve you use, it might interrupt the LVOT because it's not a standard surgical valve The native anatomy still exists. So there may be risk of interacting with it. So next you can see that here, we now into this segmentation and now we do this like what we do with a native aortic valve anatomy because there are no fluoroscopic signatures with these root replacement of the homograph or even freestyle. It's a typically severe AI as a mechanism. And so you can see this root is heavily calcified. So what we do is we go to open red circle, bisect the sinuses, and then we put a dot at the bottom of the potential neo analyst. We do that the same thing with the base of the right. Here, you see that. And then finally with this here. So the idea is to then go to the, and then look at the top of the sinus to make sure it bisects the sinus here. It's more difficult to identify the analyst because it has been a root replacement. So the suture line would be running at the level of the aortal ventricular junction. So again, you can see that here, this starts a little bit shift that should be more like here. You can see where the sinuses take off and disappear very much like a similar to the native anatomy. And then here you can see how that looks. That's the base of the non-sinus. You can see it's quite rotated. And then you can see this is the relative of the center line. So let's just make sure we got this right. So you can see that here, maybe we can shift this a little bit more on this side. So you can see, take your time in doing this end of the plane because it's going to determine the size of the prosthesis that you're going to be implanting for this balloon expandable self expanding. So, so that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to shift this here so that we can get delineate the color coding of the dots. And then I'm going to center the LVOT line as well, just to make sure the LVOT measure will be accurate. And then you click confirm. So once you're here, then you can basically measure the base the annulus that we put together. So you can see here, mean diameter 25, so it would be a 26 balloon expandable valve or a 29 millimeter self expanding valve. You can see that how it looks. It looks like almost like a native annulus, but you have a lot of calcified anatomy. So, then I'm going to crop this to make it a little more zoomed in and I'm gonna go into the LVOT. You can see that here, similar in terms of my measurement. I try to stay within the calcium instead of outside because otherwise your area is gonna be overestimated and you might inadvertently oversize too much in terms of the prosthesis because your dimensions a little bit larger than expected. And you can see that here, the LVOT is smaller in this particular patient. So next you're gonna go up to the STJ. Now this is a root replacement. So you can see here is very calcified STJ. And you can, if you spin around, remember these coronary buttons 
are not in the native position anymore. They are actually anastomose to a different location. So you just have to carefully screen this around. You can see that typically these homograph, the sinuses are very big and also the sinus height was very tall. You can see it's now completely calcified. And so you can see that and you can mark an STJ, sinus height. You can see the left main coming off. This one, in this case, a little bit lower than typical, but sometimes it's hard to mobilize the left main. So that's why it might be, that's the reason. And so I'm gonna divide the sinuses by half, but you can see that here. So what we look at next is the left sinus. You can see that here. And then I'm going to look at the, also the sinus of salva. You can see what try to get the maximal dimension. Sometimes not half of the STJ. So you have to kind of go from here to here, and commissure to here to here, and then the commissure to the top, so you can see that here. And often these are quite rotated, as you can imagine. This is the right sinus, this will be the left sinus. The non-sinus, you can just check with that. See, that's the left main coming off, so. And the right is sometimes a little aberrant or a little different takeoff here. It's a little bit of an artifact over here. So I'm going to draw a box of representing a 16 millimeter uh, balloon expandable valve, just to see how it looks. Remember these aortic roots are quite non-compliant because they're completely calcified, just like a porcine Forcing the xenograph as well. And so keep in mind that the valve may not foreshorten in them completely. But you also want to make sure there's no risk of root rupture when your balloon inflate these inside this anatomy. So you can see that here that kind of how it fits. And then so what I do is now, if you do choose a balloon experimental valve, I would then measure do the ellipse, keep circular, and then put a 26 circle and then see how it fits. Okay, if I'm going too quickly here, you can always go to my other prior video tutorials where I can do a little more detail and uh, methodical analysis to show you how I do these measurements and annotations. So I'm going to do this one millimeter mood segmentation that I've done for all the other tutorials. And I go up all the way to 10 millimeters. You can see this particular homograph, the mechanism of failure is actually AI or aortic insufficiency, which is typically the case. So you don't see a lot of leaflet calcium, but because the root itself is so calcified, it would typically be able to anchor uh, the tra transcaptal valve in place. One thing, the reason we look at the LVOT is the LVOT is enlarged, then with the self-expanding valve, there may be a risk of ventricular migration or movement on release. So that's something to keep in mind versus the balloon expandable valve, which is more consistent on deployment. So here's the STJ, just to make sure you're not gonna injure the STJ when you inflate the balloon with a balloon expandable valve or post dilate. You can see how this fits here with the circle pretty well. Again, coronary obstruction risk is typically low, but you have to be mindful of the STJ. If it's very small, you could still risk the coronary obstruction. You can see that here, if I want to measure the ST, uh, the valve to coronary distance, you can see that here. But again, remember this be, depends on the higher implantation and actually the leaflet height of the homograph. So it's very hard to see here. So this is not really the actual VTC. So I'm just going to I want to mislead you, so I'm going to just delete that. So this is the kind of a left sinus 
left corner measurement. And the right is a little tricky here. You can see it's very hard to appreciate what it is. It's actually, this patient had a vein graph to the right. And so you can see actually the corner right here, it's like a non-dominant right here. You can see that here on your right side of the screen right here. So this is actually the native right. And then there's a vein graph uh, that you see here. So this is the right. And then now here's the sending aorta segmentation. You can see very calcium. I have to drop the gain to see how this is completely frozen. So I'll put it there and then you can see the hockey puck view here. And you can see the aortic root angle. We'll just do the C arm icon. You can see it's very rotated. And also see that with the homograph replacement, this has been a little more vertical route. You can see that here. And so let's take a look at the report. So I'm gonna move this septal link image all the way to the bottom, just to keep the report consistent. And so you can see this is almost like a native anatomy evaluation. You have the annulus LVOT, then you have the one millimeter segmentation to look at the root morphology, left and right coronary height, hockey puck view, and then the septal link. So you can save this and share your heart team. And then you can also save this as a separate session. So I hope this is helpful in terms of homograph evaluation for valve and valve TAVR. You can see that it's very similar to a native TAVR, but you do need to know kind of what size root this is. Uh, also the LVOT information so that you can plan accordingly the size and the implant strategy and also the risk of coronary obstruction. I hope this is helpful and we'll see you next time.